Hi everyone, my name is Kai Long Wang, a PhD candidate from National University of Singapore. Today, I'm honored to present our work on intradomain web page fingerprinting in social media websites. So, um, I'm going to start with an in brief introduction on website fingerprinting. Um, nowadays, over 80% of the top visited websites are protected by HTTPS, providing confidentiality and integrity for the data communicated. However, the metadata such as endpoint IP addresses, temporal and volumetric patterns of the encrypted network packets still could violate users' privacy property, the unlinkability property which prevents the network attacker to track which website the user has been visiting. Even using anonymity networks such as Tor, fingerprinting attacks in the literature has yielded high accuracy. The um, current fingerprinting attacks are aimed to distinguish the website visited or the interdomain website fingerprinting attacks. While these attacks expose limited uh, information from the user, first, firstly, the only the web homepage is considered, and secondly, many popular websites, especially the social media net websites, have millions of similar but distinct pages. This could limit the effectiveness of the existing works. Privacy for using social media websites has been a concern over time. However, social media content itself is not sensitive, while the browsing behavior for an individual is, as it leaks the political orientation, religious beliefs, and other individual preferences. In addition, social media contents have drawn increasing attention in internet censorship after a series of related terrorist attacks and incidents of political manipulation. Now I would like to introduce more on the intradomain web, web page fingerprinting. So as I explained earlier, intradomain, intradomain WSF aims to disidentify the website a user is visiting or has visited. And related work has been um, targeted at identifying robust feature sets, proposing efficient algo, and then evaluating against realistic data sets. And they have yielded increasing high, increasingly high accuracy and um, and re and getting more realistic. And for the for the intradomain web page fingerprinting, our goal is to identify the web pages being visited from the encrypted network traffic. And for the attack goal, we we adopt the on path uh, neg passive network attacker, which is able to train an, a classifier by visiting offline the web pages belonging to a a, a certain domain, and then use this trained model to uh, to detect which web page the user is visiting. And for the attack settings, we adopt both uh, closed world and open world, world settings commonly used in the literature. For the closed world, the attacker aims to identify, co correlate the targeted uh, network traffic to one of the um, trained labels. And for the open world, the attacker has to decide first whether the target trace is belonging to a small set of the monitored labels. And then if it's monitored, then which exact label it, this trace belongs to. Intradomain web page fingerprinting is more challenging due to the fact that intradomain pages are mostly generated from the same template and exhibiting much more indistinguishable traffic patterns than the interdomain ones. Taking the Instagram profile, pa profile pages from National Geographic and Katy Perry as example, we record 50 of the incoming traffic traces for each of the page and plot their web page loading time versus uh, tr total transmission data. Here you can see that the traces are basically indistinguishable, showing that the traditional features used in inter interdomain website fingerprinting are not effective in the domain of interdomain web page fingerprinting. Therefore, interdomain web page fingerprinting demands a high definition fingerprint to characterize interdomain pages. We have found that CDN um, network has been deployed in social media websites to support efficient delivery of user unique content such as images and videos. Such highly individualized 
contents yield characteristic CDN traffic. From the CDN traffic, we observe aggregated CDN packets or CDN bursts. And different CDN bursts form distinct gaps between each other. And we plot the sizes for each CDN burst here and found that they are distinguishable, robust, and with minimal overlaps. More specifically and intuitively, in our paper we define the CDN bursts as aggregations of temporarily adjacent packets originated from a CDN server. From the graph here, it shows that we group neighboring packets whose interdomain pack interpacket time is smaller than a threshold delta into a burst. Here, here, and here. So now let's move on to the part for the evaluation. As evaluation, we try to um, study the intradomain web page fingerprinting in three dimensions. First, we we determine if the CEM burst is indeed a, a distinguishable and powerful fingerprint. And the second question we try to answer is the feasibility and scalability of our approach. The third question is the influencing factor for the effectiveness of the proposed feature. Before we could answer those three research questions, we need to construct our data sets. So we have collected three data sets from Singapore and Australia with a total of 12,000 unique pages and over 4,100 traces, covering the top social media websites including Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Hi. We use random forests as classifier to train on the CDN bursts as features. And as evaluation, we uh, use accuracy uh, to measure, to benchmark the performance in the closed world um, setting where the size of the classes are balanced. And TPR, which is true positive rate, FPR, false positive rate, BDR, Bayesian detection rate, to uh, evaluate the performance in open world setting where the classes size are severely imbalanced between monitored and unmonitored pages. BDR is actually very important to measure the likelihood and feasibility of the attack because TPR and FPR cannot fully reflect this information. For example, consider you have 10,000 web pages in total with TPR 99% and FPR 1%. If the monitored page is 2,000, then the correct classification rate, which is the BDR, is actually close to 100 percent and if the monitor page is only two percent of the total pages and the detection rate declined to less than 70 percent so according to bs theorem the bdr is actually defined as the probability of a detected page d is actually a monitored page which can be simplified using this expression here so we evaluate the cdm burst effectiveness as fingerprint in three angles first we study the scalability of our approach Second is a comparison with benchmark and for and then we use non-CDN burst for comparison. So here we evaluate the scalability uh, using a data data set D1 and we show we, we have we, sh we can see that our approach yield generally high perform accuracy of over 95% but it's a little lower for Twitter here because we have found that C, the, the, the CSS and JavaScript files are also rendered by CDN network in Twitter. And for the comparison with benchmark, we use data, data set D2, and we have found that our intradomain web page fingerprinting generally achieve higher or comparable performance compared to the related work. And at the same time, we have a lower computation cost. Um, means lower um, lower consumption in memory and less training time. However, we noticed that QMU achieved slightly higher uh, accuracy for Facebook and Twitter data because there is higher content personalization in these two websites, which leads to more distinguishable page layouts. Hi. For the performance of non-CDN burst, which is web server burst, we can see that the web server bursts yield much less ro robust um, classification effectiveness than the CDN bursts. There's question two. We study our approach in a more realistic data set 
open world using the open world setting. So we basically are interested to study the performance against varying number of monitor pages into the training set, which captures the attacker's capability of monitoring different number of interested web pages. And also we study the performance against varying number of uh, monitored pages in the training set, which monitors, which captures the attacker's capability of training um, and visiting web pages outside the monitored pages. Let's take a look at those two aspects in more detail. Here, we fixed the uh, 1,000 monitored pages for training and six monitored pages for testing and varying the monitored pages from 50 to 300 for training and testing. Here, we see that we our approach yield very high um, TPR and BDR, and but a very and a very low FPR, indicating our approach is is robust. And for evaluation on varying number of monitor pages, we fix three thirty monitor pages for training, and use twenty thousand monitor pages for testing. And at the same time, we vary the monitor pages from. 1500 to 1900 for training and here we see we yield similar results indicating the robustness of our approach regarding the research question 3 we uh, identified two influencing factors for our approach they are burst threshold which is time threshold for grouping the packets into bursts and variation in network latency which resulted from which which is result, resulted from fluctuation in time conditions for the burst threshold delta, we evaluated on dataset D1, and the perform and we varied the, the time of delta between one millisecond to 0 0.0 seconds, and the peak performance reaches when delta is around 50 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds. This is because when delta is too small, too many small and varying sized bursts are generated, and when delta is too big, fewer bursts are generated, and more information is lost. To evaluate the variation in network latency, we'll add random delays that has a mean value of 48 milliseconds, which is the average uh, latency in CDN networks, uh, to the original traces to simulate this kind of fluctuating network condition. And um, we from, from this result, we can observe that with a uh, more spread out um, uh, distribution, which is corresponds to smaller alpha value, then it has a more stronger, higher impact to the performance. After talking about the research questions, now we try to interpret the high performance of CDN burst by quantifying the information leakage by, the, by the each feature. The information leakage can be quantified as the uncertainty reduction in variable W, which are the set of web pages due to the variable F, which is a classification feature. After transforming the entropy equation into probabilistic distributions here, uh, where the PR uh, probability of W is a proportion of the pages uh, W versus the total number of traces, and the conditional probability of, to give, uh, of given F to identify page W is more challenging. So given a large enough data set, this conditional probability can be estimated as KW over TW. KW is a total number of traces in a data set whose feature F falls within the 95% confidence interval of values of features F for page W. Intuitively, if values of feature F for page W is too unique, then this feature alone is informative to characterize page W. And after substitution, the information leakage can be expressed using this equation. Using dataset D2 and arrange the CDN bursts in order of descending sizes, we have found that bigger CDN burst indeed it contains more information which matches our expectation. Let's come to the last part of my presentation. As mitigation, we proposed three defense mechanisms. The first is to uh, add, uh, add random delays when CDN server sends out network packets which aim to obscure the original burst boundary. The second defense is to load dummy contents in parallel of the original ones. The rationale behind is to interfere with original CDN traffic segmenta segmentation to hide the traffic pattern. The third defense is to use anonymity networks such as Tor network. That's all for my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions now. Thank you very much.